I really just feel like a part of it. I feel like I'm one of the many, many, many people that made this possible. This movie is incredible. Oh, thank you. I think it's the perfect celebration for Disney's 100 year anniversary. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. <laughs> Can you talk to me a little bit about the detail of people forgetting their wishes once they give it away? Sure. And what inspired that decision and kind of how it ties into Disney's legacy with wishes? Yeah, I think the simple thing was the idea of like, we used to, we kept saying as we would talk about the sadness of how you stop pursuing your wishes. You say, it's like, you have this wish and then you forget. They would just say, and then you forget. But we were saying this as we were having conversations. And we're just saying, you know, that really should just be part of this. That is, boy, it's convenient for the king that when you give your wish to him, you forget it. And there's the joke, forget without regret. But really, it, it's symbolically about that idea that we, life becomes so distracting that you do, or becomes so challenging in fairness, that you do forget that wish or forget to consider it. And so it was a way to acknowledge that, but then yes, also how convenient for Magnifico that you can't, you don't remember, so you don't know what you're missing. So he can control, he always looks like the hero because you never know what else is there. Um, so it did work out in that it, it worked in his favor as well, <laughs> I'd say. I love that. And then speaking of Magnifico, I was so intrigued by his origin because it felt really, really rich, but we didn't really get to dig into it because it almost felt like this was a character that started as good mm -hmm. and lost his way. Can you talk to me a little bit about developing his origin story and yeah. would you have liked to touch on it more in the movie? Well, it's funny because um, we it's always hard with a character like Magnifico to know when to stop because he could become the protagonist in some weird way. And so it was really important for us to know it, but we really said we can only share as much as we have to, or it is it is something where he has to be accountable um, to his actions, but, and we didn't want to say he's not accountable because the poor kid, you know? It, it, it So it felt like, let's make it clear what he understood. The idea that when he was young, he saw his wishes destroyed. It drove him. And you can understand that. And I wanted us to feel like we could understand philosophically, no one should have to suffer like that. I'm going to make that never happen. So it feels the nobility, you know, to me, the more exciting heroes where you understand his philosophy, whether you agree with it or not, it's different. And so, but then I think as he um, grew, the, that need to never feel that again can become problematic, mm -hmm. that, that need to control everything so you never feel pain again. It's not possible. So, but he, he tried. So what we really hoped with Magnifico, frankly, is if this is a film that you can return to, you know, anytime you want to think about wishing, that each time you do see a bit more of that, what drove him, but also as every choice he makes in this, he could have made other choices. Yeah. Every time he's challenged, he could go a different way. That was really what was most most important to track, um, but it, he had to fundamentally understand. But I could write a whole book about it if I was allowed to, because it was it was so. He was. I mean, you could just get seduced by um, that character, and I guess in a way we go, well, that's what makes him a fun villain. Definitely. And then I also loved the Easter eggs and references to all the other Disney movies throughout canon. Without necessarily spoiling what they are, did you have a favorite movie that you were able to bring in for an Easter egg? Wow. Um, well, you know, I know there are my, my favorite Disney film is Cinderella. And I know in many different ways there are nods to Cinderella. Um, and so all of them. All of those I love, I'll say. I love that. And then did you have a particular song that stood out to you as your favorite and why that was? The hardest thing for me is that I I don't have a favorite in that I am blown away, personally blown away by them. And I mean that sincerely. I have to give credit to this wish, though, because she wrote it before I'd even written the script. And it was off of an understanding of what we wanted for the story, but also who Asha was and where she was in that moment in her life. And she wrote this wish and it became sort of a, a true north for me. But um, all the way to a wish worth making in the credits that Julia herself sings, I just, that profound understanding of, of um, the, the, the beauty and pain of wishing simultaneously in, an, in a beautiful song, I think that was one that 
um, even though it didn't, it, it wasn't a part of the film itself, it feels very much a part of the whole film to me. I completely agree. And I feel your pain. I could not pick a favorite. I hope, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and then what does it mean to you to write the Disney animated movie that is celebrating 100 years of Disney animation magic? When Chris and I first started talking about this, in some fun way, as like I was just like very free because I wasn't on the film except as the EP. So I was there to help. Yeah. I was there to, um, how about, have you thought about this? Why not that? Or how's this going this way? You know, I'm a little concerned it's going that way. And then they, but Chris knows me well. So as I started just doing that role, which was very freeing, I didn't carry, it wasn't daunting to me f to, to be a part of that. It was just exciting. Mm -hmm. um, He's like, come on, you're getting it up, uh, getting up out of the seat, and you're acting out. Can you do? You, can you just take a, you know, a stab at it? Um, and they made the space for me to do that, and then I was hooked on it completely. But I think because I felt the whole studio put so much into it, I felt that we were supported all the time. That I really just feel like a part of it. I feel like I'm one of the many, many, many people that made this possible. I love that. And then one of the things I really appreciate about Asha, because all the Disney heroines fight for a bigger cause, but she feels like the first activist Disney heroine that we get to see. Can you talk about incorporating that into the script and why you wanted it in this movie? Yeah. I love that you, a couple people have brought that up about her, and I love what folks see in her. The thing that I think you know, it, it, it's focusing on that critical moment in your life. You're you're a teenager, you got your friends, maybe you're gonna get the apprenticeship. Like it's all very comfortable. The philosophy of the world feels okay. And then you uncover a really hard truth about the world. And I think we all go through that, this awakening to the greatest challenges in our world. And it usually is a far more generous time in people's lives than they get credit for. And it's a time where they really, um, go, I want more for the world. And that's that's that spirit, that activist spirit, or that, that um, I always like to say, the helpers of the world that look and say, I'm, gonna, I'm going to wish for more for others, and I'm going to do everything I can to help make that possible. And I'm going to be there for folks. And I think Asha starts off with that goal and gets a lot of help, you know, helpers along the way, and then becomes that helper herself. And I think that, and, and, and that's, you know, code for what she becomes at the end that we won't say. But it's just, um, I think, to me, that beautiful spirit of that time, where almost like that that wish in your heart is is its most generous, it could, it can drive you to change the world. I love that. Well, like I said, the movie's amazing. I can't wait for everyone to see it. It's, it's incredible. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>